that is awful. I've done that before and I don't ever want to do that again. And so I'm going to take every step and every precaution, every measure that I can to help my labors to be productive and efficient. everybody thank you so much for joining me today for my 35 week checkup or what am I doing in the last five to eight weeks to prepare for this baby's arrival what am I doing to prepare for labor how am I doing and all those kind of things that are really exciting to talk about especially in the last weeks of pregnancy now I don't know when I'm gonna go into labor I don't have a sudden induction I don't do any of that I do have a midwife and we are planning a home birth so there's quite a few things that I do in the last weeks of pregnancy to prepare for labor. I am a mom of four and this is our fifth baby that we are expecting now. If you guys are new to my channel, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Katie and this is my channel Rouse Rising and I would really love it if you guys would subscribe and stick around and enjoy this channel with us in the journey that we are on. Thank you so much for being here today. I would say there are quite a few things that I am doing in my last weeks of pregnancy to prepare for this baby's arrival. One of the first things that I have done and I have been doing throughout my whole pregnancy is exercising and taking a prenatal vitamin. Exercise is really important. Walking is so beneficial to a woman who is pregnant and really for everybody. Walking is one of the best things that you can do exercise wise. So we have been walking throughout my pregnancy, me and the rest of my family, and also I'm on my feet all day running around this house, tending to my four children that I homeschool. So I do get in quite a bit of walking and upright movement. And another thing that is recommended in the last weeks of pregnancy is to do a lot of forward leaning or hands and knees type exercises. Um, and so I do things like scrub my kitchen floor on my hands and knees versus using a mop. I will get down with the vacuum and vacuum all the corners of the house so that I am down and in a forward position. I am using my exercise ball when I'm sitting at the table or sitting at the computer and that is helping to keep me open and keep my core and everything strong because I am having to use muscles to stay stable on top of the ball. And it's just great for really opening up the hips and getting the bottom parts of our bodies ready for labor. So in addition to walking and using an exercise ball for sitting, another thing that's really important to do is squats and squatting as well as yoga. So I do yoga a few times a week when I can fit it into my busy schedule. And then um, I do squats daily as well as some light weightlifting with my arms and my upper body. And squatting is something that I think is really important and really crucial just to help get your legs ready and strong and strengthened for labor, as well as it helps open up your pelvic floor and allows space for baby to move down and engage. And if you can practice squatting or getting in a really low squat, flat feet on the ground and squatting with your belly between your legs, this is really gonna help open you up and make room for your baby. So exercise is really important in the last, well, throughout your whole pregnancy, but especially in the last weeks, just to keep you fit and fighting fit and ready to endure that marathon that is labor. Um, so be sure that you are walking a few times a week and just getting in whatever yoga or stretching exercises that you can to help your body be prepared for labor. So with regards to vitamin supplementation and nutrition, I'm still taking my prenatal vitamins and I am also still taking probiotics. The prenatals that I'm taking are from You Natural, and so are the probiotics. They are from You Natural. Um, the prenatal has folate and DHA. It is a methylated vitamin, and that is um, really important, especially for me and my family that we have methylated vitamins because of the MTHFR gene mutations, and so it is easier for our bodies to digest and to use and absorb folate than it is the synthetic version folic acid. 
So this Glow Prenatal also has DHA and all the other vitamins that you're gonna need throughout your pregnancy. And then I take the Mama Probiotics at nighttime and this helps to keep me regular. It helps to support my immune system because we know that our immune system starts in our gut. And if our guts are strong and healthy, then we are gonna be healthy and strong and able to fight infection and disease when those things arrive in our lives. So it's really important that you are taking probiotics and eating probiotic rich food and nourishing your gut so that you can be the healthiest that you can be. On that note, other things that I do to help nourish my gut are I drink bone broth. We use a lot of bone broth in our cooking and um, we also eat sauerkraut, homemade sauerkraut. I have these recipes on my channel if you want to check them out, but they are staples in our diet here at the Rao House. And so we do eat fermented vegetables that we ferment here. We do make our own nourishing bone broth to help us get all of the collagen and everything that our body needs to be healthy. Um, and then also at 35 weeks, I have incorporated uh, herbal labor prep remedy. So there are quite a few different things out there on the market. You could even try to make your own if you ordered the herbs in bulk. But I am taking from Sunstone Formulas. Um, this is traditional midwife labor prep five week formula. This is 115 capsules in this particular formula. It breaks it down on the bottle. Um, how many pills that you are to take each week and basically the herbs that are in these pills are going to help your body hormonally um, to stay in balance and also the herbs are going to help ripen your cervix they are going to tonify your uterus and help your labor be more productive and more regular um, if you are using these types of herbs even if you don't need some people don't need these types of things um, i have used a labor prep or labor remedy either in a tincture form or a pill form for my last three pregnancies. This would be my third pregnancy. Um, I do believe, oh, my last, Hagen, Torsten, Monica, this baby, my last four pregnancies, because I started with my daughter Hagen and I was taking um, a labor prep in a tincture form. And I started with Hagen's pregnancy because my first labor was a grueling 27 hour labor where I pushed for four hours with a posterior baby. So from that experience, I decided I don't wanna be in labor that long ever again. So I'm gonna take every step and every precaution, every measure that I can to help my labors to be productive and efficient. So um, with Hagen's pregnancy and with my, my oldest Riker's pregnancy, I was doing evening primrose oil, both taking it orally and um, inserting it vaginally. Now, I haven't done that in my last two pregnancies. I just don't do it. I don't have a need for it because my third pregnancy, I cannot remember if I took evening primrose oil in my third pregnancy. I probably did in third trimester and that may or may not have contributed to the fact that I had a one hour and 20 minute labor when my son finally decided to show up. So um, I did not take it my last pregnancy or this pregnancy. I haven't felt the need to use evening primrose oil because it is a cervix ripening and softening um, type of supplement. And I feel like my body is already there. My body is already ready to go. It's just waiting for the cues from baby and the stars to align to go into labor. So I don't feel like I need anything to soften or ripen my cervix like I would have my first and second pregnancies. Um, so this time, all that I have incorporated into my diet is the labor prep herbal remedy. And some people, like you can Google it, some people are gonna say, don't take the herbs. Some people are gonna say, yes, absolutely take the herbs. My opinion, and you do your own research, but it is of my opinion that um, historically, women all around the world throughout the many years that we have existed and recreated and created more humans, um, and for as long as humans have been giving birth, that our diets were primarily hunter-gatherer type diets and we would go out and forage and find whatever it was in the woods that we could eat. 
this ended up being a lot of herbs and things like that. So there was a time when we were foraging and getting things from the forest and nourishing our bodies with things like nettle and red raspberry leaf herbs and oat straw and alfalfa and just different things that we were finding that were edible and consuming these things and our body was getting the raw nutrition that it needed to have the hormonal balance to have a productive labor and that kind of thing. It is of my opinion that our modern American diet is lacking in many nutrients and so that is why we have so much supplementation and our soils are depleted and that's where our foods are coming from and so our foods are depleted in the necessary vitamins and nutrients that our bodies need. So it is of my opinion and why I have chosen to do this for myself. Again, I am not a medical professional. So any advice in this video is strictly just my opinion and what I do for myself. But it is of my opinion that taking herbs and things that are gonna help our bodies prepare for labor and ripen our, our cervix and strengthen and tone our uterus to have efficient contractions. It is of my belief that these things are beneficial to us. And so that is why I supplement with herbs. And that is why I drink my um, red raspberry leaf tea. And this is actually a blend of many herbs that I have combined in this jar. And you can check that out. I will link it down below. It is my third trimester herbal tea blend. And I'll also pop it up above, but I have herbal teas for every trimester to help with common ailments throughout pregnancy and to help nourish and prepare for labor building blood, um, that kind of thing, because we want to go into labor strong with a strong blood supply, with a strong ability to um, clot and prevent hemorrhage and for our uterus to contract down. So it is important that we have um, these nutrients in our teas or in our diets so that our bodies are effective. The primary tea that is recommended in third trimester is red raspberry leaf tea. It is recommended to drink about one cup a day during second trimester, and about two to three cups a day in third trimester. I probably drink closer to three cups a day of red raspberry leaf tea, simply because I make, sometimes I'll make two of these jars full, but typically what I do is make one jar of tea and then I drink on it over two days. I like to sweeten it with a little bit of honey and keep it in my refrigerator so that I always have it on hand and I can hydrate with it whenever I please. Um, so red raspberry leaf tea tones the uterus and it helps us prepare for birth. It has vitamins C, E, A, and B, magnesium, potassium, calcium, phosphorus, and all of those minerals provide the uterus with what it needs to expand and contract. So it is a very important herb that we have at the end of our pregnancy. Um, it's also rich with fragarine, which is thought to tone the uterus as well. So I buy my herbal teas in bulk from Mountain Rose Herbs, and um, I make my own third trimester blend of tea. You can buy pregnancy tea already in the little sachets or already bulk. And so I just went out and I didn't go out, I ordered online like a pound of red raspberry leaf tea because I started in the second trimester, right? I started drinking it last trimester. So I ordered a pound of red raspberry leaf tea and then I ordered like half a pound and then um, ounces and stuff of all the other ingredients that are in here. Now, in this particular blend that I made myself this time, I have added um, rose hips and I have added elderberries into this tea because we are in sixth season and my last couple babies were born in the summertime and my immune system was really strong, but this time I feel like I needed an extra boost. So I went ahead and added the extra vitamin C from the rose hips and all the benefits of elderberry in here. So there's little berries and little rose hips crushed up in here. There's also oat straw, dandelion leaf, nettle, and alfalfa. And a lot of those herbs and plants have different constituents which are beneficial to all women but especially pregnant women and just have a variety of nutrients and minerals in them that we need so I drink this tea a lot that's why I have a big old jar of it and I still have some herbs left because if I go to 43 weeks I'm gonna need more than this jar I just I always have a lot of it because it saves me a ton of money for the amount of 
red raspberry leaf herbal tea that I want to drink. Um, having it like this just saves a bunch of money. Do with it what you will with that information, but I prefer to add in extra herbal supplements into my regimen to help me prepare and to help my body prepare for labor because I've had, um, my second was a seven hour labor. Our third was a long drawn out premature rupture of membranes, like my water broke and then I didn't go into labor for three days. But when I went into labor, it was an hour and 20 minutes. And then my last one, I didn't go into labor till 43 weeks, self-induced, but her active labor was only four hours long. So I'm predicting that this baby could come quickly. It could come early. And when I say early for me, before 42 weeks, anything before 42 weeks is early for me because I've had three over 42 weeks. I've had given birth over 42 weeks three times. Um, okay, so another thing that you wanna do in the, your last five weeks of pregnancy are eat dates. So this is these are the Deglet Noir dates. And with these, you wanna eat about six to eight dates a day. But if you buy like the, um, medjool dates that are much bigger, those you could probably get away with like three to four of those dates a day. Now, my favorite way to eat dates, and if I'm still eating dairy, um, which I am getting, like I'm eliminating dairy from my diet currently, but if your babies have been able to tolerate dairy in the past, or if you're not concerned about a dairy intolerance with your newborn baby, then these are so amazing stuffed with cream cheese it tastes like cheesecake if you like cheesecake it tastes like cheesecake it is amazing it is our family's favorite way to eat dates i also chop them up and throw them into oatmeal i also throw them into smoothies um but yeah having them with cream cheese that's the way to do it if you have to eat as many as are recommended of these per day um, you can also make date tea, and that is in the, from the book, uh, The First 40 Days Postpartum. You can check that book out from your local library or request that they get it, but it is an amazing resource for nutrition in the postpartum period. So I have been following that book and pulling ideas from that book for my first 40 days postpartum so I can have nourishing meals on hand. And one of the things I saw in there was a red date and goji berry tea, which sounds really yummy. Dates might have an impact on oxytocin to start labor and sustain labor to progress effectively. And also dates increase cervical ripening. I mean, there's so many things that we can do these days that we know about, that we have information about how to ripen your cervix and get it nice and soft and ready to dilate and efface for labor. The dates also supposedly can half the length of labor. There's been studies done on women who take and eat dates in the last weeks of pregnancy and women who don't. And apparently the women who eat dates in the last weeks of pregnancy show up to the hospital with a greater dilation and a more effectively progressing labor than women who did not eat dates. So take that information and do with it as you will and maybe consider buying a tub of dates. And that's usually what we have. Um, we just finished up our tub of dates because the kids love them. And so I've had this package of dates in my cabinet. I was like, yeah, I'll eat these when I run out of the tub of dates because I found these at the grocery outlet store and I bought a couple bags of these. But yeah, we ran out of the tub of dates. So I'm gonna start on these soon and get my cervix ripened so I can have this baby effectively. Okay, I also wanted to talk about um, getting baby in the optimal position. So things that you can do to optimize your baby's position obviously is spinning babies exercises. If you have a breech or transverse baby, then I highly recommend that you visit the website Spinning Babies, look at the exercises there and do those exercises so that you can optimize your baby's position and get baby aligned and ready for labor. That will help make your labor effective. Um, and also spinning babies can help just with general alignment and helping your baby seat down in your pelvis properly. Um, other things you can do and what I have found to be most effective in all of my pregnancies um, is go to a chiropractor weekly or every other week. I am still going to the chiropractor every other week. I feel great. This is the first pregnancy where I have not been in crippling pain when walking, um, pubis symphysis dysfunction or symphysis pubis dysfunction. 
is something I have suffered from in all of my pregnancies. I'm not sure if I finally learned how to carry my body and how to sit and how to stand and how to do all those things with pregnancy or if I'm just not far enough in my pregnancy where I'm suffering. Usually by 27 weeks, I'm in a lot of pain with the pubis symphysis dysfunction, but I have been going to a chiropractor regularly, I think since right before, right around third, beginning of third trimester, towards the end of second trimester. And I feel incredible. I walked into the chiropractor's office today and I was like, I feel great, I have no complaints, but I want to get adjusted because I know I'm a little out of whack, but I just, I've never felt so good physically. I will say I do struggle if I sit for a long time in a normal chair, that when I stand up and I go to walk, it's really painful to move. If I lay down in bed for a while, just resting, when I get up to walk and go somewhere, um, it's painful to move for the first few minutes until I get back in alignment and then I'm good to go. Then I no longer have pain or anything, but it's the transition from sitting or laying to standing that's a little bit tough for me. Otherwise, I am not having any pain when I am walking um, and I'm very careful. I sit to put on my pants and my shoes. I stay very symmetrical and very balanced as much as I can. I am doing yoga, I am seeing the chiropractor and I'm just trying to stay symmetrical on both sides so that I'm not putting tension or twisting on my pubis symphysis causing that excruciating pain like Chuck Norris has kicked you in the crotch. The chiropractor and yoga and all of that stuff kind of plays into baby's position and if you are symmetrical and if you are in proper alignment your baby is going to be able to get in the optimal head down position for birth and so that is something i focus on greatly especially in the third trimester because i have had breech or transverse babies all the way th through my third trimester until around the time about a week or two before i actually go into labor my babies are typically horribly positioned. If they do go head down, it was only for a day. And this is my first pregnancy where this baby has been head down early on and it's popped up and out and gone transverse and breech um, just a few times in the last three or four weeks. But the majority of the time this baby is head down and I can tell and I know how to figure that out. It's real simple for me at this Point after so many pregnancies. I always know what positions my babies are in when I'm able to lay down and palpate my belly. And today my midwife confirmed that I have a head down baby and this baby has been head down. And I am so thankful because normally I'm really stressed out at the end of pregnancy with a transverse or breech baby. And I panic because I just want a normal birth. I don't want anything complicated. I will give birth to a breech baby. I won't be able to birth a transverse baby, but there's just things that, you know, that you have to be informed about and aware about in your third trimester, especially if you have a malpositioned baby. And one of those things is, is that lots of women give birth to breech babies. So you just have to have confidence in that and know that you're going to be okay if that's what has to happen. Um, you have a choice. A lot of times it doesn't always mean cesarean. And in my case, I stay pregnant for a really long time and my babies always flip head down by the time I go into labor. So I can attest to that. I can um, testify to the fact that babies typically do go head down to plan an induction or a cesarean based on baby's position because babies can even change position while in labor. So a trial of labor for me has always been the path that I have taken, I have chosen I, that if baby is malpositioned, I'll have a trial of labor. If I have to have a cesarean, you know, because baby's still in a bad position, and that is a bridge I will cross when I get there. But in my mind, I always want to have a trial of labor. That's my preference. I did it with my second baby. Instead of having a scheduled cesarean, I had a trial of labor based on a situation with my placenta, and everything went as planned. It was a picture perfect labor and delivery. And so that is why I'm confident in, in that decision to have a trial of labor in quite a few cases and scenarios um, where as long as I am healthy and baby is healthy, uh, I don't interfere with the birth process as much as possible. I like to just let things run their course and 
um, so far for me that has worked out really well with all four of my previous births. So I feel very blessed and lucky. And I attribute that primarily to having midwifery care. I even had midwifery care alongside OB care with my second pregnancy where I was high risk and my midwife was my advisor. She gave me evidence-based birth information and she was just a great person to have as a consultant in my pregnancy. So if you have questions about things, don't feel, you know, do not hesitate to have a second opinion or a consultant, a midwife consultant, if you're seeing OBs, that kind of thing. Um, get your information and make informed choices. So another thing that I like to recommend to all mothers who are facing pregnancy is if you haven't already done so, this is your first pregnancy or your first labor and delivery that you are planning, take some kind of birth class or talk to a doula or a childbirth educator or somebody like that. Um, hire somebody or consult with somebody, your midwife, your doula, your childbirth educator, and learn as much as you can about the physiological process of labor so that you have an understanding of what needs to happen with your body in order for you to go into labor, in order for you to give birth. Also, coping techniques and how are you going to get through your labor? What is your plan? Do you want an epidural? Do you want doula support? Do you just want your husband's support or your mother's support? Um, just making sure that you have somebody who's also informed about your birth plan and what you want from your labor and delivery. Having somebody there to support you to be an advocate for you if you need um, someone to just encourage you when labor gets really hard because we all hit transition where we want to give up we want to pull the plug on this labor right now right like done I don't want to do this anymore take me away from this that's happening in my body it hits every one of us in transition some of us are quiet about it some of us internalize it and we think I just want to get off this train but the train's not stopping and who are you going to have there to help you when you hit that wall? Um, who are you going to have that's going to help carry you over the wall? Or are you prepared mentally and emotionally to meet that wall and bust through it head on? There's lots of women who um, give birth solely by themselves and um, have unassisted births and it's amazing. But if you are one that desires some reassurance and some support, in your labor and delivery, then by all means, find that childbirth educator, that midwife or that doula, that support person that you can talk to about your expectations with labor and birth and ways that you can help manage and cope the intensity that is childbearing. <laughs> so um, yeah, that pretty much sums it up for my 35 week update. I really wanted to give just like a little bit more information kind of things that I'm doing that are working for me that I've done in all my pregnancies. I think in my next vlog, I'm going to go over my birth kit. This time I just wanted to talk about what are my plans for the next five weeks to eight weeks of pregnancy because I am 35 weeks now. I'm in my 36th week so I could have a baby anytime in the next five weeks or eight weeks is what I say because you know my due date is at the 40 week mark but I could go to 43 weeks. So just throwing that out there universe. I could go anytime and I will welcome labor as soon as it does come. So I'm really excited about it and um, I just want to make sure that I am doing the things that my body needs and supporting my body so that when labor happens it's as easy breezy as labor can be and I know that it's no walk in the park. I've been there done that naturally four times, no pain medication. So yes, and this is going to be our fourth home birth if everything goes according to plan. Out of our five children, this is my fourth home birth. So super excited. We are still team green. If you are new here and you've gotten this far and you didn't know that, now you know. We don't know the gender of our baby or the sex of our baby and we're going to find out at the birth. Our plan is to vlog labor and birth and share that with you guys. I like to share my birth experiences because I feel like when other 
women can see that this is how birth can be and you can be all right afterwards without any interventions, without any um, complications and that kind of thing, that out of hospital birth can be amazing and wonderful and just so much because that's the path that I have chosen. I would have done it with all five babies, like I said, if I hadn't been high risk with our second, um, then they all would have been born at home. I love staying home and laboring and giving birth. To me, it is just the ultimate. I don't have to ride in a car to the hospital. That is awful. I've done that before and I don't ever want to do that again. So um, if you guys have any questions about anything that I've talked about today or opinions or whatever you have that's on your heart, that's on your mind that you want to say down in the comments below, please leave a comment. It would be great. And I love to interact with you guys down there and have discussions and answer your questions. I have lots of fun doing that. I am pretty much an open book and willing to share lots of information. So if there's something weighing on your heart that you've got to ask or you have to say, go for it. Um, and thank you guys so much for watching. Please stay tuned because my next vlog is going to be about my birth kit and what all I have prepared for our home birth. Um, what is going to go into my hospital or emergency bag, that kind of thing. Just all the supplies that I'm going to need. I will be 36 weeks at my next update. So I will see you guys then. Thanks for watching. Bye. Mm -hmm.